Welcome everyone. Today I'm going to do a different video. I know it's going to elicit some strong reactions from both sides. Um, whether you're a fan of a certain cryptocurrency, you may feel a certain way towards this video. But regardless of what you feel, facts are facts. The truth is the truth. And it is what it is. So what, however wrong you think I am, it doesn't matter. Things are still going to depreciate over time. And that's a guaranteed fact. I studied environmental biology in college, that was my major, and I did a lot of these climate models throughout my entire undergraduate experience. And today there was an article that came out, I made a video about this previously when I was first starting my channel, but I wanted to touch on this. But basically it was headlined over various different news sources, and you see these articles con um, consistently now, here and then. and. Basically, it says we have 12 years to limit climate change catastrophe, warns the United Nations. So urgent changes are needed to cut risk of extreme heat, drought, floods, and poverty, according to the IPCC. And the reason why I wanted to bring this, this issue up is because of this idea of proof of work versus proof of stake. And proof of work is a very energy intensive way to validate transactions. And if we're going to move into a f future that require sustainability on all of our parts, we're going to have to find a better model of accounting. And I think that proof of stake is a much better way of sustainably accounting for financial transactions. And Cardano is proof of stake. It is a scalable and sustainable cryptocurrency long term. Um, this article was basically saying that they're trying to, they've given up on um, increases in temperature and the damage that it's going to do in the future that's a guaranteed it's just about how much damage we're going to do in the future it's pretty much a guarantee that earth is going to increase by an average of two degrees celsius pretty soon within the next decades so we are we have we have we're facing an extreme crisis and a lot of people are going to sit and say oh you know they've been saying that for a while it hasn't affected but you know, in reality, storms have been more intense. Um, while you may not have been affected personally, the people that are going to be affected first are going to be the people that are living in poverty or in near poverty situations. Their climate changes affect them in a much greater way than the average American or European or person that's living in a more affluent country. Here in Cardano, we're trying to work with the unbanked here. We need to realize that climate change, as a result of our actions, is probably making the lives of so many other people much worse. So, in an effort to mitigate our damage towards the ecosystem, towards the earth, we need to figure out exactly what's the best method for the financial stack of the future. Are they Bitcoin transactions? I, there's an article here, and this was written a while ago, I believe a year ago. March 7, 2017, so over a year ago, so it may be even more now, that says that a single Bitcoin transaction takes thousands of times more energy than a credit card swipe. And if you scroll down further in the article, it says a new index has recently modeled potential energy costs per transaction as high as 94 kilowatt hours or enough electricity to power 3.17 households for a day. To put it another way, that's almost enough energy to fully charge the battery of a Tesla Model S P100D, the world's quickest production car, and drive it over 300 miles. And once again, this article is a little bit dated, but Bitcoin difficulty has increased over time. It will continue to increase, so the power usage of Bitcoin will continue to exponentially increase. So while the price may go up, the electricity costs are going to have to go up as well because this is how the security of this network is built. And do we really need transactions to take up that much energy? I know people are going to say, oh, well, it uses excess or surplus energy from the grid. It uses surplus solar energy, clean forms of energy. But, you know, energy is energy. You know, whether you're, you're getting it, I know certain forms of energy are cleaner than others, but it takes energy to build solar panels. It takes oil. It takes, you have to build the system. While the, the energy itself is going to be cleaner long term, 
there's no need to build one million times the number of solar panels we need just to do Bitcoin transactions. Why? So someone can send 0.00001 um, BTC to Satoshi Nakamoto and troll? Because that's what it is. There's just a bunch of trolling transactions right now. So what are we going to do? We're going to send various amounts and just troll. You know people are going to troll. So we're using the amount of energy to power 3.17 households per day to troll. Affecting someone that lives in a coastal city that probably is going to hit, get hit by an extraordinary typhoon in the next 5 to 10 years because warming waters are warming, the sea ice is melting, ocean temperatures are rising, ocean levels are rising. So we need to find a sustainable way to validate our transactions. And I don't think it is proof of work. I think it is proof of stake. And this is just gonna get more and more energy intensive. As you can see, there are some charts here. I'm gonna include it. But Bitcoin transactions are extremely costly. And it's not like Bitcoin is being used for extremely important transactions. It's an everyday, people all use it to send BTC from Coinbase to Bittrex. And you're telling me that's that's worth the amount of power that it's using to do all this. And not everything is going to be clean. Some of it's going to be coal. Someone's, some of it's going to be dirty energy that's created. So that's that. I wanted to also reference this page. This is the atmospheric carbon page. So this is the amount of carbon dioxide within our atmosphere. And right now it is 405.51 parts per million. So that's the amount of carbon dioxide in our, in our atmosphere. You know, they said a while ago, they said that it couldn't pass 350 or else we we're going to go on, an, uh, on in a spiral downhill. You know, it's 405 right now. 450, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hit 450 eventually someday. It's... This is like a, a snowball rolling down the mountain. It can't be stopped. And right now, the Earth, it follows similar patterns to crypto. What do I mean by that? It has bullish and bearish times. So there are times where Earth can filter more carbon, and there are times where it filters less carbon. And we could be in a bearish or bullish time right now where Earth is helping us out. But it's cyclical. When you're really thinking about proof of work, proof of stake, Try to figure out exactly what you want. I hear a lot of people saying that they really want to change humanity. They want to help humanity. They want to help people. They want to be sustainable. They want to do things to help people. What, what's the purpose if we're going to help contribute to destroying the ecosystem with costly energy transactions from a slow cryptocurrency? I don't know. So I think that Cardano is the future. I think that proof of stake is the future. We have to be able to understand this. So let me know what you think. Let me know what your thoughts are. And once again, these are facts. This is science. This is facts. And if we're in Cardano, we are people that appreciate science. We appreciate math. So let us look at the facts. Proof of work is not energy efficient. Proof of stake is energy efficient. It is much more sustainable in the long term future. Let me know what you think. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And until the next video, thank you.